This is part two of everything you need to know about quadratics, but we're afraid to ask. If you can do all of these questions, I swear you have a very good grasp of quadratic functions. So let's continue. Number 10, it says, given the vertex form, find the y-intercept. And you should understand that to find a y-intercept, remember, if you have trouble, when you're on the y-axis, all the x's are zero. This coordinate is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. So we, what we do is we set, set x equal to 0 and solve. Okay, so when x is 0, I have minus 2 times 0 plus 9 squared minus 30. So that's going to give me 9 squared is 81. 81 times 2 is 162. It's going to be negative. So minus 162 minus 30 gives me minus 192. So then you'd say, therefore, the y-intercept is minus 192. I always tell my students to write it this way. When you say what the x-intercept is, what is the y-intercept, you state them. Because if you say the y-intercept is y equals minus 192, you're actually talking about the equation of a line. A little bit of semantics there. Okay, if you have the standard form, how do you find the y-intercept? Well, you do the same thing. So for y-intercept, set x equal to 0. And this one's going to be really easy because... It's right here, isn't it? We know the y-intercept is the c-value, so you can do it just by, by um, inspection, or you could plug in zeros and you'll still get minus 1. So therefore, y-intercept is minus 1. If you're in the factored form, how do you find a y-intercept? Same thing again. Anytime y-intercept, for y-intercept set x equal to zero so you can see standard form that's the best one because it's just staring at you there it's just right there right there in factored form though i have to plug in so i'm going to plug in x is zero so i'm going to have minus five here times 15. Ooh, don't think i can do that in my head mm. Minus 5 times 15, that's uh, 75. Yeah, 75. And that would be negative. Um, this one is negative, this one's positive. So this is negative divided by negative is a positive. So we're going to get 3. Y-intercept is 3. Number 13. Now we're... In these questions, the next three, we're going to be asked to find the vertex. Is it a max or minimum? And give the optimum value. <coughs> so, wow, we're in vertex form. That's the best one to find the vertex. We just read it. Vertex is minus 1 over 30. Remember, don't forget to change the sign. And here's my um, k value. So hk. Remember, h and k give you the vertex. This is a x minus h squared plus k minus h, so we have to take the negative of this number. So the maximum, is it a maximum or a minimum? Well, I look for my a value. I know it's concave down, so it's going to have a maximum value of 300. So it's always the y value, right? How high does it go? Okay, number 14, what is the vertex for this question? Well, we're kind of stuck, right? Because this one we don't have, we don't have it in vertex form, we have it in standard form. So I'm going to need to complete the square or I can use minus b over 2a, your choice. Let's complete the square and then we'll see how hard that was. So I take out the coefficient of x squared first. That's going to give me minus 2x here. Now I take half the coefficient of x. Half of 2 is 1. I square it, add 1, subtract 1. 
I still have minus 12 out here. I didn't invite it to the party, remember? So now I have minus 3x, this sign, the square root of 1, all squared. Take this out of the bracket, means multiplying it by minus 3. So it's going to give me plus 3 minus 12 is minus 9. So therefore, um, 1 minus 9 is the vertex. And does it have a minimum or a maximum value? Again, it's concave down, so it's a maximum of minus 9. Okay, so if you had minus b over 2a, so we could probably do this one really fast, um, minus b would be minus 6 over 2a over minus 6. That gives me x is 1, so I get 1. And when I plug in 1 here, again, I would get minus 9. Okay, number 15, the vertex, same thing, max, min, optimum value, it's in factored form. Okay, because it's in factored form, it means that I know where the zeros are. I don't know where the vertex is, but I can find it because I know that my parabola is minus 3 here. Here's my x-intercepts. So the axis of symmetry is going to be right in between these two values. So x equals minus 3 plus 5 over 2. That's going to give me 2 over 2 is 1. So the axis of symmetry is going to be right here x equals 1, and again I've got it concave down. I guess they're all going to be optimal values or maximum values because they're all concave down. So I'm going to plug in 1 for x here, and I'm going to find how high it goes. So when x equals 1, y is going to be equal to minus 2, 1 plus 3 is 4, 1 minus 5, minus 4, that's 16 times 2 is 32, and I have two negatives, so I have a positive. So 132 is the vertex, and it has a maximum or optimal value of 32. Okay, we're almost done. You almost know everything. Isn't it nice to know everything? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, this time we have to find x-intercepts. Mm, well, we have a vertex, so that's not going to help us at all here. So if I need to find the x-intercept from vertex form, I'm going to need to um, expand this first so I can get it into standard form. Okay, so square, twice the product, squared, minus 5. 2x squared minus 12x plus 18 minus 5 is plus 13. Okay, do you know any numbers that multiply to 26 and add to minus 12? And I already know the answer is no. So how are you going to find the x-intercepts? Your zeros. Your zeros are the function. This is when you need to pull out your little toolkit and pull out the quadratic formula. Okay, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative b is negative, negative 12, which just means plus 12. I could have written that, but I thought I would demonstrate where I'm getting these under the square root of minus 12 in brackets squared, because it's going to be positive, minus 4 times a times c, and the whole shoot and match is over 2a, and a is 2, so that's 2 times 2. Okay, so I'm not going to do all the calculation for that because I don't have enough room here primarily, but you're going to get 12, plus or minus the square root of 44 over 4. And then you can do that on your calculator. It's not, it's not too hard to do, is it? You could finish that. Well, 
Let me pull out my calculator and I'll show you. Looks like we did some trig before that. So I'm going to do 12 and I'm going to plus second square root of 44 and equals and I'm going to divide that by 4. So I get 4.66 x approximately equal to 4.66 and now I have to do it again but this time I have to subtract. So 12 minus second square root 44. Now I could have done this all in one step had I started with a bracket but if I do if I just divide by 4 now, it's only going to divide this by 4, and that's not going to give me a correct answer. So I'm going to hit answer, and then I'm going to divide my answer by 4, and that gives me 1.34. Let me just show you how that wouldn't have worked if I had done 12 minus second square root 44 um, divided by 4. See what happens? You get a wrong answer. So you would have had to do bracket 12 minus second square root 44 bracket divided by 4. And that still gives you the wrong answer. What did I do wrong? Oh, well, still, you have to get the answer first. I thought that would work, but I guess it's still selecting it incorrectly. So moral of the story is do it in two parts. Okay, number 17, find the x-intercept from standard form. So I could factor this, right? Can I see if I can factor it first? So product of 15 and a sum of minus 8. 15 is 5 and 3. I want the sum to be negative, the product to be positive. So minus 5 times minus 3 gives me 15. And minus 5 minus 3 gives me that minus 8. Okay, so these are my two special numbers, minus 5 minus 3. I put them over the coefficient of x squared, which is 3, and I reduce. This one I can't reduce. This one becomes minus 1 over 1. Okay, so it gives me 3x minus 5 in brackets times x minus 1. Now the x-intercepts, all I have to do is set each bracket to 0. 3x minus 5 equals 0. 3x equals 5. x equals 5 thirds. And x minus 1, that's really easy, right? x equals 1. So therefore, the x-intercepts are 5 thirds and 1. Okay, find the x-intercepts from factored form. Well, hallelujah, it's already in factored form. I know where the x-intercepts are. That's like being at this step already. So all I have to do is set each of these brackets to zero. And I'm just going to write x-intercepts. I'm going to tell you what the solutions are. x-intercepts are 5 and minus 7. Done. That was easy. How many zeros? How many zeros when I'm in the vertex form? Now, you know, to find zeros, we often use a discriminant. But when it's in factored form, I can make a really quick sketch of the parabola, and I can tell you whether or not it's going to cross the x-axis. So the vertex for this is 6 and 4. 6 and minus 4. Okay, so I go... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1, 2, 3, 4. It's right here. It's concave down. Whoa. How many zeros? No zeros. Okay, now you could have expanded it and used the discriminant, but that would be way too much work. You can make a quick sketch, and you can tell um, that because it's concave down and we're already below the x-axis, that it's never going to cross. In standard form, how many zeros? Well, for this we're going to use a discriminant because a discriminant is very easy to tell you how many there will be. So d equals b squared minus 4ac. Now remember the discriminant came from underneath this radical sign and that's why we got zero 
one or no, uh, zero, one or two <laughs> um, solutions for the equation. So the zeros tells you how many times it's going to cross the, where the x-axis, where the x-intercepts are. Whoa. Okay, so let's say what a, b, and c are here and plug it in and we're going to be done. Okay, so d equals b squared, 6 squared, minus 4 times a times c. Oh, I already know there's going to be 2 because this is going to be positive and this is positive. So d will be greater than 0. You don't even really need to finish this. Um, you could if you wanted to. Let's see, it's going to be 36 and 16 times 21. Eh, I don't know, but it's plus. Plus 16 times 21 is greater than 0. Therefore, two zeros. Okay, it's going to cross in two places. And this one, so often you're asked to find how many zeros without using... Um, the quadratic formula without solving for them. So that means use a discriminant. How many zeros? How many zeros in factor form? How many for this? Well, three and minus one, two. And this one, I thought I'd throw this one in here. This is still factored form because obviously I could write it like this, but it's really a vertex form equation, right? So this times this, this is still one zero. It's a double root. Remember, that's one where it's going to, um, so I'm just going to write one here first and I'll make you a little sketch. It means that when we're at minus 5, parabola's concave up, it's going to go like this. So it has one root. It's also one zero, sorry, one zero, or sometimes um, if this was an equation, you would say it has a double root. Okay, so that completes that entire handout. I hope you were able to um, download it and read it. And maybe this could be a really good review for you. Um, you could write out all the equations that I've used and see if you can do the work, right? So this is everything you need to know to move around with quadratics. And in the next few lessons, we're going to be doing some word problems. Hope this helps you out. Bye for now.